right, folks, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Um, I think this training session is for extension mobility. Is that correct? Everybody here for that? Yes. Okay. Um, before we talk about it, um, configure it, and test things out, I guess what I kind of want to do here with this session is I kind of want to whiteboard a little bit um, and kind of see what you guys know about extension mobility. Maybe we can all learn some stuff here. Okay, um, if I have two sites, uh, let's just call these two sites your HQ, and let's just call this other site your branch, okay? Um, we all know that one of the things that we have to create inside of Call Manager is we have to create a phone, um, and we have to also create a user, correct? Um, and typically, the phone that is created and you, when you make this association to the user, I guess it's meant to be a static user right there on the phone, right? Um, but what happens when we need some kind of mobility? What happens when we need to move from HQ and let's say this user decides to go over here to the branch, right? One of the things that you guys will have noticed is if I go over here to the branch phone, they may have completely different numbers uh, that are associated with that phone. So just because I go over to the branch site, right, I don't have my own phone, the speed dials aren't there, my phone features may not be available. So I guess the purpose of extension mobility is to kind of help bridge this uh, problem that we have, right? Um, I want it so that when my user moves from HQ to branch, that I could effectively log in to this 2002 phone. And then uh, once logged in with extension mobility, I would get a couple of things, right? I'd be able to see that my DN gets transferred over. I'd be able to see uh, my phone template stuff. Like let's say I have some speed dials, right? I want my speed dials to be moved over there. Um, Maybe I want my soft keys to be moved over there. And so um, essentially what I want to do is I just want my phone to behave the way that it is when I'm on my HQ as the same as I am on when I'm on my branch, right? So we're gonna try to create extension mobility to be able to do this. Um, one of the things that I'm gonna show you what you have to create here is we're gonna have to create something known as a device profile, okay? And here's the thing about how extension mobility really works is when we create a device profile, this device profile, I think of this as a virtual phone, right? Um, and so this is basically what's going to follow you whenever you try to log into something. And um, as you will see, the device profile, when you configure it, it's almost exactly the same as configuring a standard phone. And the idea here is I want to put all of the settings that I have in my home phone, like my speed dials. Maybe I want to have my soft keys moved over. Uh, of course, I want my directory number to be moved over. If I have any secondary lines, like you know a contact center line or something, maybe I want that to follow me as well. So I guess that's the thing here is I want to create this device profile, which in fact is going to be our virtual phone. I want to be, I want to have that be the exact same thing as the configured home phone that I have, right? So it will have directory number 2001. It will have the same speed dials. It will have the same soft key templates that are applied, right? When you move over to your branch phone and you log in, it's not the phone that follows you, but what happens here is when I decide to log into the branch phone, it's the device profile that follows you. So that device profile will be applied to the phone here inside of the branch and should start displaying my home uh, configurations, right? Um, the device profile is probably the most important piece of this, right? That and we have to configure other things like our phone services. Uh, we have to activate extension mobility. We must make certain associations. I will show you guys how to do all of that, okay? 
Um, a couple of things that I want to mention about this, okay? You have a device profile that you're creating. Typically speaking, what's going to happen here is when we create our device profile, um, we have to specify exactly which phone type it's going to be using. For our purposes of this lab this week, we're going to use a 7962 phone just because it's easy and that's what I have inside of my virtual environment. When you create the device profile, you have to specify a um, phone type, and you also must specify a protocol, in this case, skinny, okay, and or SIP signaling protocol. So whichever one you decide to pick, it's up to you guys, right? Um, what happens when, you know, I may have a 7962 phone here, that's why I created the 7962 device profile, but what then happens when I'm trying to log on to a phone over here that's not a 7962? What happens when it's like an 8841 phone, right? So I guess if I'm logging into a device that doesn't match my device profile, there's another thing that we may have to configure here. And that other thing would be a default device profile. And a default device profile, what it's going to do is it's going to try to take as many of the configurations on your regular device profile and move those things over here to the device default. Okay. A couple of things about this is if your call manager environment, if you're enabling extension mobility for multiple types of phones, you're going to have to create a different default device profile for each phone type and also each protocol that you're going to be dealing with, okay? So that's one of the things that um, we will have to consider here. Um, I'm probably not going to focus too much on the default device profile. We're probably just going to focus on the regular device profile and at least show you the configurations there, okay? Any questions so far? <clears throat> okay. So I guess I'm going to show you guys a step-by-step -step kind of like solution as to what you guys sh would need to do if you guys uh, were going to configure, uh, you know, device mobility here, uh, extension mobility, excuse me. So the first thing that we're going to have to do to get this thing to work is you guys need to go to Cisco Unified Serviceability, okay? Now, I've already activated the service to enable extension mobility, but I just want to show those students that have not had a chance um, to look at the serviceability page. So let me navigate here real quick. If you go to tools, and you go to service activation, this is where you would go to activate all of your phone services. The phone service that we're looking for, particularly for this particular function, is the Cisco Extension Mobility Service, right? So as soon as this loads, um, I should be able to show you guys that. Again, I've already activated it, but I'm just showing you guys this is what you would have to do you're going to configure it, okay? Okay, here we go. Um, what I'm looking for is that you guys have to turn on this service for extension mobility to first work. So I've already activated it. All you need to do is check mark it and then click the save button and it should be good to go at that point, okay? Um, after that's done, we need to get back to the administrations page. Okay, you don't need to be in the serviceability page anymore. But once we're in the administration page, I guess the next thing that we're gonna want to do here is um, we're gonna wanna configure the phone service so that you know if you touch the phone services button on your actual phone, that that extension mobility service shows up to, for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. So here I'm gonna go to device. I'm gonna go to device settings. And um, I'm going to go over here to phone services, okay? Now, I've already created this extension mobility service just to test it out, but I'm going to delete it here just so I can show you guys how to create it fresh, right? So the service name, you can name it anything you want. I'm just going to name it extension mobility, okay? Um, and then there's a service URL here. Here's the thing. If you've ever looked inside of the administration or deployment guides, um, and if you just Google how to set up extension mobility, you may see that, you know, Cisco has this kind of like a 
service URL plastered everywhere inside of their administration guides. Um, so you're going to take this, okay, this is well-known information. You, if you Google it, you'll be able to find the service URL. But if you go out there and you find it, right, uh, most likely what you'll see Cisco do is they'll probably say something about the host right here, right? All you have to do is just replace that with like your call manager IP address. So 10.1.5.15 for us, okay? And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy that service URL and I'm going to apply it to this right here, okay? Now, it is case sensitive, folks. If you mess this up, and even if, if something's capitalized or something's lowercase, this service URL is simply not going to work. So make sure that you copy and paste that correctly. Okay, um, it is case sensitive. Okay, folks. Um, that's really all you've got to do. Um, the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to enable it. Okay, um, and then this is not talked about so much, but this particular option right here, this enterprise subscription, let me tell you what this option is all about. Um, with this enterprise subscription checkbox, it basically means if you check mark this box, then that means that every single phone, every single device inside of your network will be automatically be um, subscribe to this phone service. So every phone you go to, if you press the phone services button, this extension mobility, um, you know, service will automatically show up. Um, you don't have to subscribe to it on an individual basis. But here's the thing about using this enterprise subscription thing, okay? Whether you enable it or not, okay? Um, whether you enable this or not, it, you will only ever see this particular option when you first create the IP phone service. So you'll notice what happens. I'm not going to enable it, but just to show you guys, when I click the save button, notice how that enterprise subscription disappears, right? And that's because it only shows up at the, at the very start of the creation of your IP phone service, okay? If you messed it up, what you'd have to do is you'd have to delete your IP phone service and then add a brand new one, okay? But that enterprise subscription says that everything in Call Manager will be able to have a subscription to that service when they hit the phone services button, okay? I'm not gonna enable the enterprise subscription because I need to show you guys how to subscribe to this phone service. So that's kind of why I didn't check mark it just so that you guys could see it, okay? The next thing that I'm going to want to do, I need to make some associations, right? So um, I have a bare bones system right now. The only thing that I put inside the system is some phones, right? And I added in a one user, right? I added in myself, a Benjamin Wynn user, okay? So that's literally all I configured this week. I didn't do anything else, nothing special. If I look at my Benjamin Wynn account, <clears throat> you'll see I put up my password, I put in my PIN, okay? Um, there's not much else that I kind of did here besides, you know, making myself part of like a, some permissions uh, groups like the CCM end users so that I can maybe access my end user interface for the self-care portal and maybe some standard CTI enabled so that I can control my phone on any of these virtual devices, right? So I didn't do much, but the first thing that I'm going to have to do here is I need to make a device association. If you don't make a device association, you will not be able to get extension mobility to work. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do on my users page here, again, user management, end user, go to your end user, and notice the control devices, how it's empty. I want to make an association with a particular phone here, right? So I'm going to select one of my first phones that I've created, and I want to have that association with that particular phone here, okay? If I go backwards, you'll see that my control devices now show up in my configuration here. And here's another thing that you guys will note. Once this is done, okay, if you scroll down here and you take a look at directory number associations, you'll notice that by default, this is blank for most of your users, right? After you've made this association to this SCP-111-222-3333, if I could show you guys what that looks like, I just open up a new tab over here. 
you'll notice that that SCP-111-222-3333, if I drill down into that particular phone, you'll notice I have a directory number associated with that phone. It's 2001, okay? Once you've made this association, down here, you'll get a dropdown that you can associate a phone number to this particular person. And so what I'm gonna wanna do here is I'm gonna wanna select 2001. And you'll notice 2001 automatically gets populated here because the system knows that a 111-222-3333 in fact has that directory number of 2001. And that's how that kind of shows up within the dropdown. Okay, so you have to make your associations for extension mobility to work, okay? Let's see if that saved my configuration, okay. All right, so that's all saved. Um, once I've made that association, I guess uh, the other thing that I wanna show you guys is if I go back over to my 7962 phone, the one that's a 111-222-3333, you'll notice that I have a bunch of things here. I have a directory number. I have some speed dial stuff, okay? Um, I have a phone button template associated with me. I don't have a soft key template, but if you want to add a soft key template, you can. It's up to you guys, okay? Um, and you'll notice that I've made another association here with my device, right? I've made sure that this phone is actually associated with my user here. So these are one of the requirements when creating a new phone from Cisco starting with like call manager version, I think like nine is that they do require that you associate a user to that phone and or make it an anonymous user, okay? I'm gonna make that association to my Benjamin Gwynn account though, okay? Now, one of the th things that I wanna do since I'm on this page, okay, is you would have to go down into this page and then you'd have to be able to check mark certain things to enable for extension mobility, okay? So you could, check mark that here or if you have a lot of phones that you need to perform this one check mark for i would in fact do like a bulk uh, like a bulk task right like let's say i have like a thousand phones that i need to check mark this one thing for one thousand phones i don't want to do this individually so what i might want to do is i might want to go to bulk administration i may want to go to phones update phones and create a query in this particular case, okay? And you'll notice here I can increase my search options. I can decrease my search options, right? I can change it to an and or, or logic, right? So whatever it is, whenever you find all the phones that you need to find here and you filtered everything that you need to filter out, you can click the next button. And for all four of these phones, if I want to enable extension mobility, I just go down here to the extension mobility section. And what you can do here is uh, if you check mark the most left check mark, it means, hey, call manager, change this particular option. And if you see here with extension mobility, notice how there's a right check mark. That means I want to check mark the extension mobility box for all four of my phones. So again, left check mark means, hey, Bulk administration, do this. And then for the right check mark, I'm actually enabling extension mobility here, okay? And what else I wanna do, I may wanna apply this configuration when this bulk job has finished. So I'm gonna scroll up top and also apply config to all four of these phones, okay? So once I've enabled extension mobility there, you can scroll to the very bottom here and you can just run this bulk administration task immediately, okay? And um, anytime you're running any kind of a bulk task, if you just go to bulk administration, go to job scheduler, you'll notice that the bulk administration job that I just performed just barely here, uh, four number of records process, total number of records is four, zero failures, this looks good to me, right? If I go and I try to navigate back to the phone, okay, that extension mobility check mark should be checked for everybody. I got one here. If I go to 2004, they should also have an extension mobility check mark that's you know, check mark for them as well because we did this with bulk administration. Okay. Are you guys okay with these concepts so far?
we've turned on the extension mobility service. Okay, uh, we've made some associations from your phone with your user. Uh, and then we've also enabled extension mobility for those particular phones here. Okay. I guess the next thing that we're going to want to do here is we're going to have to create our virtual phone. If you guys remember our lecture in the past, right? That virtual phone that we created is known as a device profile. Okay. And that, prof that device profile is what's basically going to follow us when we log into different phones and have extension mobility uh, turned on for. Okay. So this profile, this device profile thing, that's what follows us. That's what we're gonna to try to configure next, okay? So to configure the device profile, what I want to do is, hold on. If you take a look at my 2001 phone, this is my home phone, right? When we create our device profile, I'm gonna want to try to make this as close to the same as possible as my regular phone. So you'll notice that when I create my device profile, I'm gonna to go to device, device settings, device profile. And when I add new, the device profile is gonna ask me about my profile type, right? Very much like your phone type. In this case, I've created a bunch of 7962s, so I'm just gonna create a 7962 here, okay? It's gonna ask me for a protocol, like I mentioned earlier, skinny or SIP. We're doing skinny because all my phones happen to be registered via skinny, okay? But whatever profile or whatever protocol you guys are working with, again, you're more than happy to do SIP because I know that's what most people are doing, okay? And then I guess I gotta name my device profile something, right? When you have created a phone, this is typically where you put your MAC address. But yeah, there is no MAC address here. We're just naming this profile. So I'm gonna say, um, ben underscore DP for Ben's dev uh, device profile, okay? Um, other things that you can configure here, uh, music on hold, again, that should already be defined, but you can further define this if you want, okay? Um, locale, which is language stuff, right? So if you're English speaking, and maybe you travel over to like a Spanish speaking, you know, uh, place where you have your, you know, phones, uh, you may want to take your English stuff and apply that on that Spanish phone so that you see all these English type menus when it reboots, right? So locale usually means language or localization, localization, okay? It makes sense that if I selected a 7962 phone that my phone button template should probably be a 7962 phone as well, okay? Then the soft keys, these are your phone features, right? Like your conference buttons and or your call park or whatever special features you configure on your phone, um, you can select here, okay? Um, and that's really it. So as soon as you click save, you'll notice that what ends up happening here is this looks like a phone, does it not? Except, again, just know that we're not at a configuration of a phone, we're at the configuration of your virtual phone called your device profile. So over here, what I'm gonna wanna do is once this association side shows up, I want to associate that same directory number that I had on my home phone, okay? So notice when I make that association, 2001's part of this 111-2222-3333, that's my actual regular phone that's sitting on my desk. And then this device profile now, that's my virtual phone that's gonna be following me. And 2001's associated with both, both of these devices here. Okay. Now here's the thing. If you notice, I'm just gonna show you guys, if I go back to my phones over here, You'll notice that over here on my phone one, and notice how I have different speed dials there, right? If you want those speed dials to show up, because this is my regular 7962 phone, if you want these speed dials to show up on your device profile, you're gonna have to mimic that over here on the device profile. For instance, I may want to put that same number here, one eight, or you know, let's do 800, 555, one two one two. And maybe the label here, I want to call this 1-800-CALL-NOW, 
right? Or if you have like an 800, 555, 2121, this could be like your cell phone, okay? Maybe you have another one for your home phone, 303, 555, 1212. Maybe that's my home phone, okay? So whatever it is that's on your regular phone, you're gonna wanna try to make this the exact same thing as your regular phone. You guys see that? So once this is saved, okay, now you have to do something. You have to go back to your device, okay? And here's the thing, every single phone that you want to have this extension mobility feature, you're gonna to have to drill down into each and every phone. You're gonna to have to go to these related links and you're gonna to have to subscribe or unsubscribe to these phone services. And the phone service that I want to subscribe to is I want to go ahead and select extension mobility and then I wanna click the next button, okay? Here's the thing, folks. Remember what I told you about that um, enterprise subscription when we first created our phone service. If you had selected the enterprise subscription, you don't need to subscribe to all these services like I'm doing here. But not a lot of people know what the enterprise subscription is and they may not want to enable enterprise subscription for every single person on their network. So if you don't enable enterprise subscription, you're going to have to manually subscribe to these phone services to every single phone. Okay. And here's the thing. I'm subscribing to this phone service on my regular phone, phone one. And I'm also going to do this to phone two as well, because if you think about it, I'm going to have to log on to a different phone other than my own, right? So I want to do that. I want to subscribe here and I'm good to go. Okay. That way, when I go back to my other phones here, if you go to phone one or phone two, this is phone one, 2001, phone two is 2002. If I click on this, globe services button. Notice how that extension mobility button shows up. And that is because I subscribe to that service. Okay. Now you're not out of the woods yet. You still have to subscribe to something else as well. Because when we think about it, right, if I go here to phone two, let's say I log in with extension mobility with that Benjamin Wynn user, that virtual phone is going to follow me. Okay. And here's the thing, what happens when I want to log out of extension mobility? Like for instance, if I uh, come over here, let's, let's just log in really quick. I'm going to log into this Beamline account and I'm going to do, uh, hold on, Beamline. Let me try to change my pin real quick. I don't know what I set it as, so. Okay, so now that I changed my pin, let's do something else here. Uh, before we actually test this, let's um, let's go over here. I'm gonna check my phone. I'm associated. Okay, um, I think I've made all my associations. Uh, I think since I've created my device profile, I'm gonna go over to my user. And I am going to want to apply my device profile that I just created for myself. And I want to allow that into my CTI control devices. CTI control devices, if you guys didn't know, CTI stands for computer telephony integration. The idea with CTI in this particular case is when you start touching the buttons, once you've logged into another phone, right? You want the system to have that virtual phone control your actual phone, right? So we're going to want to apply that device profile here for our CTI control devices. And then under here for extension mobility, I'm also going to need to take this Ben device profile, move it down to your control profiles here. Okay. There's some stuff here for the default profile. Um, and there's some stuff there for log out profiles. We'll have a discussion on that after we kind of demo all this stuff. Okay. But once you've made these associations, click save. And then here's the thing. If I go over to my phone now, let's try this again. 
if I select this and then I use my being win account, submit it. Notice how I have the login successful. It's going to now reset the phone and this phone should show up now as 2001, right? And then all my speed dials kind of showed up with it. But here's the thing that we have to realize, right? Um, let's say I make a phone call here. Notice the CTI, what's happening here, right? Is that I'm controlling this phone, but on my home phone, the home phone's actually making this phone call, right? I'm just making those dialings on behalf of my home phone here. That's what the CTI here is meant to kind of control for you, for computer telephony integration. Because remember, this is our virtual phone. This is our real phone right over here, right? So um, once this is done, we do have a problem here though, because if you guys go to this phone services button, you'll notice this shows up, but it shouldn't be showing up. But like, you'll notice that when you select this, there's a logout. What you may want to do to have that logout show up is if you guys go down to device, device settings, and you go down to device profile, in your device profile, uh, you are also going to need to subscribe and unsubscribe to this phone service. Notice extension mobility here. If you click next, you are also going to have to subscribe to this phone service. If you don't subscribe to it early on, here's what's going to happen is um, if I'm on this phone and if you click the globe button here, that extension mobility button might not actually show up if you didn't subscribe to your device profile as well. Okay. So make sure that you guys subscribe to both the phone, physical phone, and also the device profile, which is your virtual phone. Uh, because then otherwise you may not be able to go ahead and log out of this profile if you haven't done that, okay? That is why I like the enterprise subscription so that you don't have to subscribe to all these things. Everybody will have extension mobility and then you know if you have a device profile, you'll be able to log in. If you don't, you're not gonna have to log, you're not gonna be able to log in anyways. Okay. So anyways, um, yeah, if I want to choose this and I want to log out, great. I'm going to, this phone can then log out. It'll change back over to 2002, right? And it's just like a regular phone at that point. So um, any questions that you guys have for me with this kind of like a training session, any kind of gotchas that you guys have run into when you guys configure this stuff in the real world? I have my question is uh, we have uh, extension mobility A, B, and uh, and the SUV key, which I know you sign that when you when you're changing to modify the key or something. But why would you do all that if you're only going to be modified? You know, when you're logging, I thought it would be like I have a user here and I constantly log in there, but there may be another user that logs into the same phone. It doesn't seem to work that way. Uh, just that's my question. Uh, say that question one more time. I'm sorry. Okay. You know, I ha you go to a phone to log in via extension mobility. And okay. you'll, see, you'll see extension mobility once, twice, maybe uh, two times in there, and then you have uh, extension mobility SUL or something like that. Why would I have all three of those? Uh, keys in there for that to log in to the phone. Ah, uh, you mean like when you go in here and then you click the phone services button, right? Yeah. You're having, you're having many options here. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. So the reason why that is the case here is because you are probably subscribing to too many. Like what I would do if I were you is go into your device, go to device settings. And then at home, what you want to do is go down to phone services and make sure that you only have one extension mobility service created, right? Yeah. Um, what I'm betting what's happening is you have extension mobility one here and then let's just do this for fun, right? Let's put extension mobility and then I'm gonna put two here, right? right. And then, right. Yeah, yeah, and then what's happening here is if I just put that same extension mobility, oh, wrong place, hold on. Yeah, if you have another place here, 
And then if you'll notice here, if I go over to my phone too, I'm willing to bet that what's happening is you're just subscribing to multiple extension mobility services. You only need to do one. That's what but I thought. How, yeah, I think what's set up for you guys is, is you guys are also, you know, subscribing to multiple extension mobilities, which means you have multiple services turned on. Mm -hmm. And then what ends up happening is you'll see this here in phone number two, as soon as this thing reboots here. Okay. When you click on the phone services button, um, it should have showed up that I have two of them here. Let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's Let's what see. I see. I see three of them on there. They said, you know, yeah, one. if you see three of them, it means that it's subscribed to three different ones. Um, <laughs> let me ask you this then. Do you only have one cluster or are you doing like cross cluster extension mobility stuff? Uh, I, I, I think in the future we'll probably do cr uh, cross cluster, but right now we're not tied to anybody yet. We're only a single cluster. If you're just a single cluster, get rid of all the other extension okay. mobility stuff because you don't need it, right? It, you only right. need one. I've never okay. seen reason for that. Yeah, thank you. So basically, that's pointing across to another cluster if I wanted to go to it, right? Okay. It could. That's right. Because different extension mobility services can service other clusters. That's why I would imagine you'd have it. But, you know, again, that's... Yeah, I think I that makes a lot of sense to get rid of that. Thank you. Okay. You're very welcome, sir.